Greetings to you. I am Louis Farrakhan, minister of Muhammad's Mosque No. 7, New York City, speaking to you on behalf of that great teacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the black man and woman of America, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Messenger of Allah, whose return to this microphone is anxiously awaited and expected in the near future. To him, I am deeply grateful and highly honored for granting me this great privilege and opportunity once again to represent him and his message to you, his beloved people. Our subject is titled, The Black Man Must Unite and Build a Black Economy. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's task in America is very similar to the task of Moses in Egypt. The mission of Moses to Israel was twofold. Moses had to elevate Israel both spiritually and economically. This is also the divine mission of the prophesied man like Moses, who is in America today among the oppressed, mentally enslaved and exploited black man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has the twofold task of elevating the black man and woman of America both spiritually and economically. Messenger Muhammad has worked tirelessly and unceasingly for nearly 40 years to give his followers and his people a higher standard of living. His mission was and is to improve the quality of life of the black man and woman in America and throughout the world. His mission is to bring to us that heavenly life of peace, prosperity, and perpetual progress that is referred to in the scriptures as the kingdom of heaven or the hereafter. Many people in America and throughout the world have labored under the misconception that heaven or the hereafter comes after man is physically dead. This is the wrong way to understand Scripture. This kind of misinterpretation of Scripture makes a person or people careless about their present condition in hopes that a mystery God will better conditions for them after physical death. This kind of misinterpretation of Scripture robs man of the will to resist the forces that make his life miserable and robs man of the will to put forth the necessary effort to make a better life for himself, his family, and his nation. Messenger Muhammad advises us to search carefully the pages of the Holy Quran and Bible to see if God and his prophets were describing to us a heaven or hereafter while we live, or a heaven or hereafter which comes to us after we are physically dead. Messenger Elijah Muhammad calls on the religious teachers of the so-called Negroes and the religious teachers of the Muslim world to get away from the preaching of such ignorant and slavish doctrine that man will receive heaven or the hereafter after he is physically dead. Messenger Muhammad teaches us that heaven is an elevated state or condition of this life, and the hereafter is the same. An elevated state or condition of life here on this earth after the destruction of the power and authority of the wicked to rule us under injustice. Of course, some scholars may argue that according to scripture, heaven or hereafter comes after death. But Messenger Muhammad asks the question, did you not know that the earth and its people are already dead spiritually? Under the yoke of sin, ignorance, oppression, injustice, poverty, and want? Messenger Muhammad says that this is the time that the dark people of our planet, and especially the so-called American Negroes, 
should come into that heavenly state or condition of life. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been raised up by Allah in the midst of the mentally dead black man and woman of America to guide us into that heavenly life of peace, contentment of mind, brotherly love, prosperity, and unlimited progress. And this is why Messenger Muhammad calls on the black man and woman of America to unite and build a black economy. To inspire the black man to build a black economy is a task of tremendous magnitude due to the crippling effect of spiritual misteaching through the religion of Christianity which has given the masses of black people a false, unreal, and impractical view of life, its reward for labor, and its consequences for the lack of labor. Consequently, before Messenger Muhammad could effectively attack the black man's economic plight in America, he had to liberate the black man spiritually and mentally from the slavish doctrine of a belief in a mystery God and a better life for man after man is physically dead. To believe that there is a God in the sky or even on the earth that is going to do everything for us and we just have to sit back, pray, and all our desires will come to pass is to make an absolute fool of ourselves. It disgraces our worship of God and manifests our ignorance of God, nature, its laws, and how they function. Messenger Muhammad says we must wake up today from the belief in a mystery God. Men have searched for billions and trillions of years for that mystery God and they have not found him. So wise men lose no time searching for that that does not exist. If man will not work, if man will not sweat, if man will not fight, bleed, and die to change his own condition, then there is no God that will do it for him. Have not you heard the saying that God helps those who help themselves? The Holy Quran is very clear concerning this matter. It is written in the Holy Quran, Verily, never will Allah change the condition of a people until they change it themselves. Again, it is written in the Holy Quran that man can have nothing but what he strives for. From this we learn the lesson that where there is no striving, there is no gain. For as long as a people lack the will to make the necessary sacrifice to change their own condition, their condition will remain the same. And this is why Messenger Muhammad calls on the black man of America to unite and build a black economy. There is a song from the play Porgy and Bess written by white people depicting their view of our condition. I got plenty of nothing and nothing is plenty for me. This song is sung by black people about black people. It is about a man who is contented with nothing. A man whose idea of heaven is a place where he can sit around all day doing nothing. Did not you know, my beloved black brothers and sisters, that a man who has nothing and wants nothing is truly a dead man? In the scriptural teaching of the resurrection of the dead, Messenger Muhammad teaches us that it is referring to the dark people of the world in general and to the black man of America in particular. Gabriel's blowing his horn only means an angel or messenger of God sounding the trumpet of truth in the ears of the black man causing him to be spiritual life. 
This quickening of the masses of the people to mental and spiritual life makes them dissatisfied with their condition of nothingness. This quickening of the masses to mental and spiritual life makes the masses to want what the classes have always had.